In the 31st century, Space Patrol 101 is sent out on a mission to find a new planet to live on after Earth has been completely ravished by war, disease, and pollution. The crew of Space Patrol 101 were made up of co-pilot Brock, age 25, Captain Riley, age 39, in command, and Matt, as well. Crod, who used to be a cop before he joined Space Patrol 101, he was 28 and, and in perfect shape to be the weapons, chief weapons officer and security. And second in command, Hayes, born 114, 3042, pilot for Flight 101. And then Mitchell is a computer technician, assistant specialist, age 30. And then there's Zaid, a computer and communications chief, age 24. One step below Mitchell, IQ 122. And then John, assistant security of officer, Ridge, chief of engineering, spent most of his life learning about science and spacecrafts. Is 24, and then Tam, the ship's nurse, is the shuttle doctor. And uh, as an asteroid comes flying towards Earth, uh, Ridge, chief of security, and assistant engineer, and Lieutenant Max Casbah, age 20, all rush to the meteor conservatory. And when it crashes, and the observatory conservatory, and it obliterates, it splits in the rooms in half. But the asteroid crash lands the meteor from the meteorite damage blast. The pilots for the spaceships, while well, civilians are trapped inside the conservatory observatory dome. The rest, the pilots rush off, and the last launch is Shuttle 101. Uh, can community evolve to a point where we can learn how to govern ourselves or control our environments and naturally and metaphysically? Then, this is thinking that's a wondering, interesting philosophical question. I step in and Descend into the lavatory, conservatory, conservatory at the elevator shaft. Nature can only teach humans about evolution. Grand Canyon in the background. And the symbols of time and erosion. We long for a place where time and money don't matter and in space. Without the government, civilians are responsible for that. How do we go trust everyone? The potentially different individual. Yes. Everything is falling apart around me as the building sinks into the ground of lava. It must be the apocalypse. We have seen this kind of thing before. How do we know it's really the end of the world now? Or whether or not we can save it. Can we be sure to trust humanity again this time? Uh, humanity. Evacuate the premises before it sinks into the ground. As the lava, the Hell's Gates open up all around from underneath the ground, beneath the Cosmic Observatory. Hooray! 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 And get into your spaceship shuttles. There's nothing lonelier than defeat and death. Well, yeah, blind as a bat in the belly of the beast. Yeah, scrambles. Everyone scrambles to get their space patrol shuttles 1 through 101 launched. Ridge tightens some bolts as he ships mechanic. Tam checks in as the shuttle 101's doctor. Everyone on board. I guess the question is to ask. God, what? Why? Oh God, what? I, I haven't I died yet? In the silence, the tickling, the existence, like cricket singing for the hopes that we can may have a chance to make tomorrow better at the place than before. The revolutionaries want to liberate uh, people from a corrupt system that offers protection through fear and economic slavery as well as ignorance. It's not the liberals' fault that the system has failed. It's not the folly of youth to protest such a corrupt system when complacency only adds to the higher power. A planetary pandemic manipulates resources to solve the overpopulation problem. The general population control is not the final solution to biochemical engineering and warfare with the work in process instead of old-fashioned atomic warfare. It's going to be used to control the rising cost of health care population. Sure, it's illegal, but for more but not no, than 50 our citizens to gather and protest just as long as the corporation makes money on it. That's all right. They, and so Spaceship 101 blasts off, thinking they can find another planet with resources to take back to Earth and help heal the damage that has been done. Uh, they get away with murder and leave their theme parks open for humans. Because as long as they're paying customers, we 
way it perpetuates the system that enables a corporation to make us compete against each other for monetary gain instead of spiritual relevance. That's what the human being's really worth. Jeez. <laughs> you have enough weapons there, Max? Well, yeah, they, they are for our protection. We're exploring potentially dangerous new planets. Yes. Sometime in the distant future, the last of their space shuttles has been launched. Commander Riley says, Go to warp speed, Hayes, he commands. Everybody get your equipment and meet me in the airlock. We're approaching the moon. We're ready to orbit so we can leave this base and head for Mars. Yes, sir. They had heard rumors that a golden stone lay its energy source. A sacred golden stone hidden on Mars. The scientists wanted to use as an alternative power source. The scientists wanted them to bring the golden stone back to study it, but little did the crew know. There was a vicious alien monster guarding it. And NASA, basically just waiting for data at this time. They studied the galaxy and solar system of most of the, their Voyager probes have returned and... As they approach their mission on Mars, Execute landing procedure. Uh, scientists have figured out how to manufacture electromagnetic force fields to protect spaceships that go into their black holes in deeper space and the on realms of parallel universes and in infinite dimensions of alternate realities. And uh, an attempt to research their galaxies, other galaxies and their natural resources they could use to help sur Earth survive. In deeper space, they sent out Space Patrol 101. And they came across the first pl red planet in order to establish, accomplish this. They would have to seek out other resources to power their spaceships and have it to design faster spaceships with force fields where they'd have to be able to bend space and time itself using an uh, ultraviolet or uh, unconventional f forces. And electromagnetic gravitational vibrations through their laser systems. Pluto went racing on a stallion chariot, flying faster than the speed of orange. I wish people would stop telling me what to think. Just let them exist. It's Commander Valiance and as thinks. It was Commander Valiance. Anyways, on this mission, when they get in their scouting pod, they go down to the planet commanders of Valiance, Max and Hayes, board their scouting pod. As they exit. Aliens travel through space transdimensionally. And they land safely and launch their stale hooking pod and they explore the mission of Mars in order to seek out the Golden Stone. And then the three passengers take off in their scouting pod, obviously. I'm, uh, I'm sure I'm picking up some very strange readings up ahead. Let's land over there. Yes. They cautiously enter a mysteriously unexplored cave where the signals are coming from. It's a beepy noise. Yeah. Follow its coordinates. Hey guys, I think we can take our masks off. I'm picking up some traces of oxygen on our scanner. Hey, sis, I guess the coordinates turn around the corner. Oh! It's aliens, they soon learn the cave is airtight, but it's guarded by a monster, alien lizard, what? And they s see the golden stone. Wasting no time, Commander Andy Valiance grabs the golden stone. Oh no, out they go. It's gone after them. <laughs> Aliens roar as Max and A's storm out of the caves. We're going to have to we go now, fast! They're out of breath. Everyone gets their helmets on, back on! It's aboard the space pod! Get away! Shoot this monster! They always attack! Head towards the starship to the caves! Come on, Max! It's not waste your time! These are laser bolts! They're coming after us! They run frantically from the cave with a monster hot on their tails. It's gone! Commander Alley Valiance leads them back to their scouting pod with a 
Monsters still chasing after them. Hey, hop on board the scouting pod. Their monsters still chasing after them. They hop on board the scouting pod. And straight back to their Starship Space Patrol 101. Commence launching procedures. Firing back at them. They fly off in their scouting pod. Hoping to escape an alien monster. They head back towards their world. The mothership is coming prepared to fly them off the planet directly into the Spaceship 101. The scouting pod launches into the docking bay. The Golden Stone, a great space station, 47. Come on, let's go! Take off! Yeah! Just in the nick of time, start up the engines they get, as the aliens roar back. Swear, and they'll get vengeance with their roar. Alien lizard, what roar? Yeah. Oh. Uh, it helps their spaceship with the, with the time and space traveling. The aliens panic. Why do they take our sacred magic stone? They think helps them. They're tele telepathically speaking to each other. They were so primitive that they thought they could pray to the magic stone for guidance. <laughs> but uh, little do they know, far away from them, the humans went. Space Patrol 101, identified craft. This is Space Patrol 101. Please identify yourself. <laughs> Receiving alien signals. It says, they're picking it up. Some sort of signal, sir. Receiving from this alien craft. It looks like Morse code, essentially. Hayes says, that's weird. How could they have known Morse code? Captain Riley asks. Well, that's what they picked up from the probes we sent out in space. The Voyagers and Peren and all that. Just sending it back to us, like, like it, 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 their images, because they, so they, how they know how to translate and commit to us, our language. Communication specialist Zade speculates. Good thinking, Zade. Can you decipher it with our computers and translate the message? Captain Riley asks, of course. Just wait a minute, Zade replies. I wish someone would come and do what I've done for them. I wish someone would do for me what I have gone out of my way to do for others. To help heal my heart and soul. Maybe this is another alien civilization in advanced sea lines that had evolved in their space patrol coming back to their place of origin where the Sphinx was as it translated through the skip's computers. Could be a distant race of highly evolved cat people, yes. They're sending our signals, codes back to us apparently. Uh, there is a time on Earth where felines rule the planet. We communicated telepathically that as the dominant species. Now they wouldn't set paw on our planet for fear of persecution. Meow, we will not be declawed. Meow, meow. We will not be spayed or neutered. Meow, meow. Oh. 